Are you considering getting bunion surgery? Or maybe you're already planning on doing it, but you're wanting to know what the recovery period's like, how invasive the surgery is, and if you'll ever be back to normal. So welcome to part one of our What's Bunion Surgery Like series. Hey friends, welcome to Adulting with Esther. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my journey through bunion surgery. So in this video, you're going to actually see what the surgery looks like. You're going to hear about the type of surgery that I received and how it's different from the other types of surgeries that are available on the market. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to know how I'm doing here almost two years later post-surgery. I wanted to make sure that I went to a doctor that was good with athletes and people who actually need their feet to perform and not just move around. Then I made sure that I got two opinions. I went to a pre-op for both of the doctors. When I was at these pre-observations, I made sure to ask them a lot of questions like, what does the surgery look like? What will I be able to do post-surgery? How invasive is the surgery when it's done? What techniques do you use when you're getting the surgery? I.e., do you use lasers or do you use knives? Will my bones be screwed back together? But the biggest question I wanted answered was, is bunion surgery actually a good fit for me? You see, what I learned after these post-op appointments was that I had developed arthritis between the big joint in my toe and the toe, the joint, you know, the part that made the toe move up and down. Um, that had started to cause a lot of pain when I was wearing shoes, and it just wasn't a pleasant experience. But not being able to wear shoes with a heel like this high and starting to feel pain, and also being a teacher who's on her feet all day long. I knew that this was something I wanted to get investigated and come up with some sort of solution. Instead of just bunion surgery, they did offer me other methods that would be significantly less invasive. One was the idea of cortisone shots. These would be injected into the foot and I was told that they would last um, about three months to six months to a year, depending on the level of pain. What they do is they ultimately just kind of numb your toe. They decrease the pain and inflammation over time, but because it's a temporary solution, shots could end up being a regular thing, even if they are only annually, and that wasn't something that I was interested in. The other option was orthotics. Orthotics are just an arch support. They're made to fit your feet, especially you get them molded with kind of a plastery thing if you've ever gotten braces with the process they do for your retainer, and prior to getting braces is very similar, only on your feet. So orthotics were an option, but those would only help me in flat shoes, like athletic sneakers or boots that I wear in the winter. It wasn't going to help me with any shoes that had any type of heel or incline, nor would it help me with high heels or flats, and those are what I wear a lot and where I was also experiencing the majority of pain in my feet. So it just didn't seem like a good fix. The last option was the surgery. When I asked if I was actually a good candidate for surgery, they asked me, are you in pain? Well, yes I am. They said, okay. What level of pain are you in? I said, you know, I think about it every single day for multiple hours a day. It's not painful, but it's annoying, and I recognize it, and it's achy, and it lingers, and I don't like it. And at this time, I was only 27. Now, what they told me was that if I was experiencing pain, this could be a solution that could fix it. It might not fix it. One option is that the bunions could literally grow back after they were removed or there could be complications. They didn't give me data for this, but they did say that there are chances it wouldn't work out. They did tell me though that one of the doctors had received the surgery herself, and she had had the surgery almost 15 years prior and was still very happy with it. So I investigated more and there are two processes. Um, typical bunion surgeries actually go through the top of your foot and kind of flay it open and because they go through the top of the foot it doesn't well first off it makes for a really ugly scar but then second of all it also increases the recovery time and it makes it harder for your foot to heal and a lot of people don't get the range of motion and the mobility and the functionality of their feedback the foot first podiatry, podiatry they go laser swiss incision technique they go through the side of your foot and when they go through the side of your foot it um it doesn't imply that scarring, it allows for the foot to um, be able to be used right away. The day I got my feet cut open. We are heading to bunion surgery right now. Um, this is my second surgery. What they're going to be doing is my left foot. They're going to be uh, slicing and dicing my big toe, as well as realigning the bone and putting three screws in. 
and then they'll be um, doing a bunionectomy on my pinky toe as well. They'll be also removing a cyst that is in there, which makes the Taylor's bunion a little bit more pronounced. They'll also be lengthening my fourth toe on my left foot, which is done through a process of snipping the ligaments at the bottom of the foot, which ultimately makes the toe kind of dumb and not be able to bend like it should. One thing that went terrible last time was they were not able to give me a medication that was strong enough. And for the first 24 hours, I was in excruciating levels of pain. Um, I'm allergic to NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which means I wasn't able to have um, things like ibuprofen or anything that would in decrease inflammation. It would only suppress pain. So all they really gave me was extra strength Tylenol. Didn't do the job. This time they've given me Tramadol. It worked for me last time. I'm hoping it works again. I know a lot of people have had negative experiences with Tramadol um, or it just doesn't work for them. I didn't really have the issue of the constipation or the no pain relief, so I'm hoping that it does the job like it's supposed to. Again. Other things, um, I was called by the anesthesiologist last night to confirm that I'm not allowed to eat eight hours prior to surgery, no food, drink, or water even. Um, and that's just so that in the event that, you know, I wake up in surgery or I uh, puke, I don't puke on myself and kill myself and choke myself. So I am all empty and I'm exhausted and I'm ready to get some food. And you also need to have someone to drive you because after the surgery, and you'll see me, um, Last time I was really, really convinced that I was fully competent and aware, but then I watched the videos that I took and I was not. So you have to have someone that's going to drive you from the surgery to home. I've also taken off work for the rest of today and for tomorrow, so I'll be recovering. And for the future, I'm gonna have a lot of follow-up appointments. Uh, for the first month, you have a follow-up appointment every single week, so for the first four weeks. Then after that, they go to bi-weekly every two weeks. And then for the third month, they do th every three weeks for I think two or three appointments. And then it's monthly and then you get a six month check-in. I haven't had my four or five month check-in on my right foot, but they elected to do that in combination with everything today because they're also going to be removing the screws out of my foot. They're gonna be putting a little X on top of the foot where the screw is, because you can actually feel and see the screws, and I'll give you a shot of it in a sec. You can feel and see the screws, and they're actually going to just put a little X and just drill it out. They don't have to come out, but I'm choosing to get them removed for two reasons. One, my pinky feels kind of stiff, and I just remember having more mobility in it, and they believe, and I do too, that removing the screws will give me that level of mobility back. The second reason is, I have met my deductible for insurance this year, which is actually why I'm going ahead and getting a second surgery. My left foot is not that bad, but um, it's going to be completely covered by insurance, except for $1,045. That $1,045 is for their laser therapy that they do at Foot First Podiatry. Um, the laser therapy is not covered by insurance because it's kind of, you know, an experimental technology, but they claim, and I'll attest to it as well, that doing the laser therapy can cut down on physical therapy and decrease your recovery time by up to 300%, so three times as fast. And I believe it because last time I was walking, I mean, I, I, you'll see, I'm going to walk out of my appointment today on my feet. Now I'm only supposed to be on my feet for 10 minutes every hour for the first three weeks. And so with that combined with the laser therapy, I'm only at five months right now and I've been doing planks and lunges and jumping jacks and running and everything else and I feel great. So I'm hoping that I have even speedier recovery on my left foot because I have the right drugs from the beginning. <laughs> and something else, you have to wear pants that are easy to remove for the surgery, not because they wanna take your clothes off. All my clothes will stay on and you'll see that. I am going to have a surgical shoe. It's not a boot, it's not a cast, not an air cast or anything like that. Um, it's really kind of just a sock with a bunch of gauze around my foot and then a shoe to keep my foot stiff in case I bump it. And um, if I want to take my pants off, I would have to go over that really sensitive and swollen foot. So they highly advise to wear pajama pants or sweatpants or shorts or um, basically anything but jeans or leggings because you'd either have to wear them for three or four days or cut them off. And now it's time for surgery. Viewer discretion is advised as you may be seeing some potentially graphic content. And if you're getting value out of this video so far, remember to hit that like button.
What is that, Dad? A cyst. Gross. It's a gross cyst. Your teacher <laughs> has a gross <laughs> cyst. <laughs> we could taste it. I won't right now. <laughs> she might put it in your food, so watch out, you guys. <laughs> So this is her bone, and this is her joints. Her joint is pretty and white, and her bones are pretty good too. So now we're going to remove the bump that is her bunion. Gross. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Take the bump off the bunion. So we broke the bone, we put it where we want it. That's why that pin's there, it's holding it in place. And now we're gonna put the screws in to hold it together. Nice. They just walked me to the car. They said they took videos. I don't know if they took videos. They drugged me up very fast. My two feet are a little numb. My right foot is numb because they took the screws out. And that was cool. And then my left foot is numb. They're going to be numb for quite some time. I just took my tramadol with water. I can eat that, which I'm very, very, very excited about because it's food and I haven't eaten it in a very long time. But don't worry, I'm convinced. I will have a great idea very soon. <laughs> I wonder if they, they made me take x-rays at the end of this and they were asking me questions and it was like they wanted me to think and I don't know if I answered them at all. <laughs> um, here is what my right foot looks like. Hold on. Here is what my right foot looks like. It is in a boot with a sock and then my left foot in my shoe. It's okay, we've got our ton of iodine up the leg. Because they took the screws out of my leg. Prior to the surgery, they brought me to the back and then they put my foot under a really cool scanner that was an x-ray, but it was like an active x-ray. So they were able to see where the screws were and they marked them with the pen. And then they also marked up my other foot for what they were going to be doing. And they made me sign both fo foots to um, guarantee that. I, I consented to the cutting of my body that they were doing. And then they put anesthesia in my arm. There's that. And the doctors checked in with me. They made sure I had my medicine. And then they laid me back and put an electric blanket on me, which was so nice because it's very chilly back there. And then I woke up about two hours later and they went into another x-ray and we saw that the screws in my right foot are in fact gone. And we also know that there are screws in my left foot now. It is very numb and it actually doesn't hurt, but I am thinking in about 24 hours it's gonna start killing. I'm trying to beat the pain, and as soon as I get home, I'm gonna go to sleep. I've got our next video here where the saga continues. <laughs>